animals. In animals, a movement is coordinated by a cluster of neurons in the spinal cord called the central patterns generator, CPG, produces signals that drive muscles to contract rhythmically in a way that produces running or walking, depending on the pattern of pulses. A simple signal from the brain instructs the CPG to switch between different modes, such as going from a standstill to walking. The ocean. The ocean has been getting bluer, according to a study published in the journal Nature. But that's not really good news for the planet. It means that the plants that give the ocean its green tint aren't doing well. Scientists say that's because the ocean has been getting warmer. Well, Alex, the National Association of Realtors is at least putting the champagne on ice. The industry group says the slight rise in sales for previously owned homes shows the housing market is finally stabilizing, which is the first sign of a recovery. Now, that, of course, is an interpretation of the numbers, Alex, and one that's coming from an organization known for being somewhat of a cheerleader for the housing market since its members are made up of realtors who've been losing a lot of money in the slump. Now, for a more sober view, I talked to Wellesley housing economist Carl Case, and he says the slight uptick in sales hardly offsets the fact that numbers are down 20% from the year before. I think it's really important for young people not to feel restricted in their choices and also to be aware of the choices that are available to them. And obviously the media has an incredibly important role to play in that. I think we tend to talk about science as this big kind of monolith, but of course, actually, it's this beautiful multifaceted thing. You know, there's almost something for everybody there. And there are so many different aspects of it. You know, somebody that's going to be attracted to working in biology might be a very different person from somebody who's attracted to engineering. I suppose it's about knowing the breadth of opportunities that are out there. And so anything that universities and broadcast media can do to make sure that those opportunities are visible. going to argue that the tremendous increases in productivity that we associate with the Industrial Revolution originate not so much from changes in science or technology or new inventions, where England was far from unique as from changes in attitudes, attitudes towards morality, towards what constituted the good, attitudes towards property which became in England individuals long before it did on the continent. Attitudes toward the proper role of government. And together, these attitudes constitute much of what the Luddites were protesting against. Now, millions of roses get handed out on Valentine's Day, but growing roses has an environmental impact worse than many other crops. Start with climate change. Most roses in the U.S. and Europe are imported from warmer climes. All that flying and trucking adds thousands of metric tons of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere.
Then there's all the water needed to, well, water the flowers, and the runoff fouled by copious quantities of pesticides needed to make the roses look perfect. There's also the wildlife and workers poisoned by all that fumigation. Add to that habitat destruction where floral plantations displace native forest and wetlands. Finally, there's the refrigeration needed to keep those blooms fresh. The electricity is often produced by burning fossil fuels, and the refrigerant gases also exacerbate climate change. A more sustainable and possibly more romantic approach is to go with flowers certified by outfits like Veriflora, or even better, whatever flowers are in season locally. Of course, that's not much help for those of us in wintry climes. Maybe try writing a poem. Let's see. Roses are red, violets are blue. <laughs> I think what, what is most remarkable about Dexter is his capacity for stress management. Michael C. Hall, in a conversation about his TV character at the Rubin Museum of Art in New York City on October 24th, he spoke with psychologist Kevin Dutton, author of The Wisdom of Psychopaths. And, and I think that's, that's because of his ability to, as the heat goes up, his... Absolutely internal temperature goes down. Yeah, he, yeah. He, the, the crazier things get, the cooler he feels. He almost craves chaos. He, he seems to attract it, cultivate it, mm. encourage it, because it's the only thing that somehow soothes him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very realistic, actually, because what you find is that the more chaotic a situation, the more that psychopaths have to make decisions under pressure. Uh, the better their decision-making gets, and we've seen it with Dexter, the more the, the, the pressure builds, the cooler he gets. And that is exactly what you see with psychopaths, it really is. Mosquitoes are an unpleasant fact of summer, but 2012 has been especially bad for running into these irritating insects because some carry West Nile virus, and they're known to have infected some 2,000 people in 48 states this year. At least 87 people have died from the infection, which can cause swelling in the brain. Almost half the cases have been in Texas, and to lower risk of infection, some areas have taken extreme measures, including aerial pesticide spraying. But people can take some simple measures on their own to reduce their risk. In an essay in Annals of Internal Medicine, public health experts make recommendations. First, simply avoid areas likely to have mosquitoes. And if you can't or don't want to stay indoors, wear long clothes that cover your skin and use insect repellent. Eliminating standing water, such as that pooled in puddles or unused containers, can also help reduce mosquito breeding grounds and populations overall. Stopping the mosquito spread helps in the long run, which is what we have to deal with because scientists say that West Nile virus is, unfortunately, here to stay. Ronald Cotton went to prison for rape. The victim picked him from a lineup, convinced she was accurate. She picked him again years later when his case was reopened. This second lineup included the actual rapist. After 11 years behind bars, Cotton was later exonerated by DNA evidence. Experts say that the current lineup format pressures witnesses to identify a suspect even when they lack confidence. So researchers are trying to improve the accuracy of such identifications. One recent study had more than 900 participants watch a short film of a staged crime. Up to a week after watching the film, the viewers looked at photos of suspects, one at a time, and rated how confident they were about each one's guilt. Half of the participants could take as long as they wanted to look at the photos. The other half had to decide within a few seconds. And this fast group was up to 66% more accurate. The study is in the Journal of Psychological Science. 
strong memories are accessed more quickly than weak memories, which may explain why choosing fast tends to mean choosing right. Another factor that's putting the standard police lineup itself on trial. In lab tests, music and lighting can affect how much people eat. Now a study has found that changing the ambiance of a fast food restaurant to more of a fine dining atmosphere lessened the amount of food people crammed into their pie holes. To quote the paper, softening the lighting and music led people to eat less, to rate the food as more enjoyable, and to spend just as much. That last finding means that fast food joints, which are accused of contributing to the obesity epidemic, might actually try it. The study was led by well-known eating behaviorist Brian Wansing from Cornell University and appears in the journal Psychological Reports. The researchers converted part of a Hardee's so that it had soft lighting and slow jazz instrumentals. The patrons were expected to possibly eat more in the relaxed section because they'd linger and maybe get dessert, but they actually averaged 18% fewer calories per meal than the folks in the rowdy section, down from an average of 949 calories to 775. The overall experience appears to have been a more satisfying meal, even if there was less of it. If you're thinking about upgrading to Apple's new iPhone 5 when it debuts in a few weeks, you're going to have to figure out what to do with your current device. Given how much we've come to rely on these gadgets for storing pictures, contacts, and personal information, some serious privacy issues should be considered before selling, recycling, or trading in your old phone. Typically, you restore factory settings on your smartphone before parting ways. But a couple of recent articles on NBCNews.com and Yahoo.com find that factory resets are inconsistent, depending on the phone. BlackBerry and Apple resets appear to delete and scrub personal data the best, according to data retrieval experiments described in the articles. But Android and Microsoft smartphones weren't as good at wiping important information. In the Yahoo article, computer analyst Steve Burgess recommends that, in addition to the factory reset, you should remove a phone's memory and SIM cards before turning it in. Robert Siciliano's advice in the NBCNews.com story was a bit more severe. He recommends a drill, a sledgehammer, and a bucket of salt water. Icy objects such as comets may have helped start life on Earth by delivering water and carbon-based molecules to the young planet. Because putting something on ice doesn't necessarily keep it from changing. A new study finds that even in frigid, deep space environments, simple hydrocarbon molecules can react to become more complex ones. The process even works when temperatures drop to near absolute zero. But just what kind of organic molecules would exist on the icy bodies of a forming solar system? Researchers at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, investigated how organic molecules might evolve toward greater complexity, even in the cold of interstellar space. The scientists found that ultraviolet light, which radiates from stars and galaxies, can induce rapid changes in icy hydrocarbon molecules cooled to 5 Kelvin. That's a frosty minus 451 degrees Fahrenheit. The chemical reactions resulted in molecules of more complexity, which is the right direction to go if you want to eventually make amino acids and biological molecules. The study appears in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. It just goes to show, if you really want to freeze something in place, you'd better encase it in carbonite. 